to HCPD online television. We are coming live to you uh, from Dalai Slam, Tanzania. I greet you all in the mighty name of Jesus. This is Bishop Perry Biemba, President of Joyful Ministries International and Bishop of Bi Joyful Bible Churches International, uh, based in Zambia and across uh, Zambia. Uh, and outside Zambia, of course. Now, uh, I, I, I'm a fan and, you know, I, 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 I'm a member and I've subscribed to HCPD and I'm encouraging you to subscribe to HCPD if you want to view my preachings, my teachings. Many people that do ask, where can we get your teachings, your preachings? You can get them at HCPD online TV. You can be able to get my teachings. God bless you. Now, we've been talking about life is a journey with five stations. I have said that station number one is station opportunity. Station number two is station desperation. Station number three is station frustration. Station number four is station silence. Now, we are dealing with station number five. Well, how did we find ourselves here? Because life number one, like the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 1 to 8 will tell you that there is a season for every event and a time for everything under earth, which means nothing is permanent. And I came to tell somebody that nothing is permanent. God will change your life. Your life will never be the same. I can assure you, it doesn't matter what your situation is, God will be able to change your life. God wants to change your life. God wants to lift you. Now, that's why he gives you station number five. That's why there's no way life will continue just to be bad, 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 bad. Because we don't save a bad God. We save a good God. He will bring the season of blessings for you. And we have said, why the season of blessings? We are saying the season of blessings will always come because you carry the covenant of Abraham. Let's see it in Galatians chapter number, uh, uh, Galatians chapter number 3. Uh, we see it in Galatians chapter number 3, verse 15. Uh, 15 to 16. Brethren, I speak in terms of human revelation. Even though it is only man's covenant, yet when it has been ratified, no one sets it aside or adds condition to it. Which means what was spoken, no one can be able to change it. So what was spoken to Abraham, no one can be able to change it. So as long as you are the seed of Abraham, there is nothing which can block you from being blessed. You will be blessed. As you can see, like Ishmael, they are also of course their own Ishmaelic covenant, which God made uh, because Ishmael is a son of Abraham from a legal marriage. Aga was a legal marriage to Abraham. So Ishmael is blessed because he's a son of Abraham. And he says, You'll be great. And you, you, you'll be so great. It's only that you'll be fighting with your brothers uh, along your boundaries. But you'll be great. As you can see today, with the richest people in the world, the Arabs, have got money. They are ruling and everyone is chasing to become a friend to Arabs. Everyone, everyone in the world, they want to become friends to the Arabs. Why? The Arabs have got money. They have got oil. Because he who has money will rule. So they are ruling also indirectly. So the season of blessing will come because you have got the covenant of Abraham. And as it is a better one than that, the covenant which the others have, as it's the covenant of Abraham, the blessings will come because of what Christ did for us or because of God's love. Romans chapter 8, verse 31. Let's see it. Romans chapter 8, uh, verse uh, uh, 31 to 32. Romans chapter 8, verse 31 to 32. Uh, it says this. Uh, what then shall we say? I love Paul. He says, he's asking a question. And I'm also asking you a question. Why should you die without experiencing the blessings of God? It is impossible. It is impossible. No matter your situation, it is impossible. The season of blessings will always come. God bless the children of Israel not because they did anything good. If there is a, a, a nation which has been so rebellious, so whatsoever, it has been the children of Israel. But you still give them manna, you still give them whatever because of his love. 
Because God, because of his love. So, so Paul is saying, what then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? Not even the devil, not even the economy, not even the government, not even the angels, not even Gabriel, if he doesn't want. If God is for you, no one can be against you. He who did not spare his own, but delivered him for us all, are we he not also Really give us all things. God will give us all things. All things God will give us. It doesn't matter your situation because of God's love. So that sometimes you get a blessing, don't think because you are holy. But he will give you, but God wants you to change your life. He doesn't just want you to keep on crying and crying and crying. So number three, I'm saying the season of blessings will always come because no season is permanent. There is no permanent season to God. We have seen it in the book of Ecclesiastes. They stand for this, they stand for this. Even, even, even Solomon, uh, Solomon keeps on speaking about season, uh, his seasons uh, in the old book of Ecclesiastes. There is season to gather, season to do what? So there are seasons. My friend, if things were scattered, this is your season to gather in Jesus' name. If you are sick, this is your season for your healing in Jesus' name. If you are crying, this is your season to rejoice in Jesus' name. And those who have things, this is your season to know how to create opportunities. For you have got blessings. Use them to create opportunities. Now, number four, or the same number three, we're saying Psalm 30 verse 5. Let me read you Psalm 30 verse 5. We see what God is saying so that you can be able to know uh, what God is doing uh, uh, in your life. Psalm 30 verse 5. It says, for his anger is but for a moment. Some of us, we think God is hungry, mad on you for long and long and long. No, God can never be mad forever. He says his favor is for a lifetime. In fact, the favor of God is for a lifetime. Now, I love this last part. It says, weeping may last for a night, but joy comes in the morning. So, God is saying, there is nothing which is permanent. Your blessings are coming. Your blessings are coming. Your blessings are coming. Just begin to declare them upon your life. That my blessings are coming. My season will change. My blessings are coming. My blessings are coming. God wants to change your life by bringing blessings. Number five, the season of blessings will always come because of your obedience to the word of God. My friend, there's no way you can be obedient and you live in curses, you live in lack, you live in poverty, you live in sickness. I'm not saying those who are sick, they are not living in the blessings of God. No, I'm saying there's no way your life will continue to be bad, to bad, to waste, to waste. God will bring it. Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all these things. What are those things? The things the pagans are running for. So you, you are not desperate running for things. Because when you are desperate, you'll be running for things, running for clothes, running for cars, running for uh, houses. God says, even your father in heaven, the, the advantage of our lives is that the Bible says, even your father in heaven says, he knows that you need those things which the pagans are running for. But you seek to face the kingdom of God and all these things shall be added to you. So just go deeper in the things of God. Grow in the things of God. Now, we want to continue. What do we see in this station? There are two things we are going to notice in this station. There are two things. What are those two things? Because now God has given you blessings. I've shown you five ways why blessings will come to you. You don't have to give any reason why blessings will not come to you. You don't have to give any reasons why blessings cannot come to you. So I'm giving you now what will happen when you have blessings. Number one, you maintain your blessings. Tell your friend you are watching with that maintain your blessings. You have to maintain your blessings. The, the problem is that some people will come at this level, but they fail how to maintain their blessings. How do you maintain your blessings? By creating opportunities using your blessings. You maintain your blessings by creating opportunities. Because why? Because station number five is just about creating opportunities. And after all, life itself is just a life of opportunities. Abigail, in 1 Samuel chapter 25, let me show you. Uh, 1 Samuel chapter 25. Uh, uh, 1 Samuel chapter 25. We see a story of Abigail. Uh, 1 Samuel chapter 25. 1 Samuel chapter 25 and verse number 27. Uh, the Bible is talking about Abigail. Now, let this gift which your maid servant has brought to my Lord be given to the young men who accompany my Lord. Verse number 35. So David received from her hand what she had brought to, to, to him and he said to her, Get up, 
get up to your house in PC. I have listened to you and have granted your request. She's using what she has to maintain the blessing. This woman was rich. This family, she's coming from a rich family, but they are going to lose their money. They are going to lose everything because of the foolishness of the husband. But she uses what she has to create an opportunity to change the situation, to maintain the blessings. What are you using the blessings God has given you? Are you creating opportunity with them? Oh, you are, you are foolish like Nabo. You think it is your wisdom or your power. You may miss a chance to create opportunities. Remember, you missed the first opportunity. You chased for opportunities. You cried for, uh, for missed opportunities. You went through silence to be trained to handle blessings. Now, your unseasonal blessings learn to create your opportunities because life has to go back. Because Solomon says, there is nothing new under the earth. What was will be, which means God is saying, I will bring back you this opportunity but you are the one now this time you get involved the first time they were chasing you but this time you are the one to create opportunities hallelujah and that's what god wants to do upon your life number two you create opportunities by using your blessings you create number one you maintain blessings number two you create opportunities using your blessings abigail told david we see again from the same girl the same lady abigail uh she told david remember when you become king remember me let me read for us, verse number uh, verse number thirty-one, uh, 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 that this will not cause grief or trouble, uh, troubled heart to my Lord, both by having shed uh, blood without cause, by by my hand having avenged himself. When the Lord shall deal well with my Lord, then remember your maid servant. She's saying, remember me. I know when God would have elevated you, when your season changed, David, I know this time you don't have anything because David didn't have anything apart from the army. He wanted things, he wanted food, he wanted things. So, but he's, she's saying, I know God will bless you. I know you will never continue to be in luck. You shall have things, David. When God has elevated you, remember me. That's what Abigail is doing. And we see it, well, uh, uh, we see it later that uh, David remembered this lady, Abigail. She was the third wife uh, to King David. I, I, I want us to see, uh, to watch something there. Because now you are using your opportunities to create, uh, you are using your opportunities, uh, you are creating opportunities using your blessings. Uh, verse 16, the Bible says, a man's gift makes room for him and brings him before great men. So do you want to be great? God is saying it's not about anything. It's about what you have. It's what will take you to great people. Yes. What you have, you can use it to create opportunities for you. Because God wants you to create opportunities for your life. So he's saying what you create opportunities is with you. I've taken you to the season of blessing. I've given you a talent. I've given you a job to create opportunities for your life. Hallelujah. And that's what God wants to do for you. That's why I'm, I'm telling you, invite your friend to watch SPD, HCPD, online TV. You see what God is doing. Don't miss the broadcast. Every day, watch it. Watch some messages. Watch every message. Uh, 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 you, know, you are busy. I know some of you, you, you are busy just to do whatsoever, but you can take a moment and just be able to be able to watch. And it will be able to change your life because God wants to change your life. Now, I want to talk as we are uh, about to conclude our subject of life is a journey with five stations. I'm saying this is the only station which has got what we call the beauty and the dangers of this season. The beauty and the dangers of this station. This is the only station which has got the beauty and the dangers. Why? Number one, why is this station beautiful? Why is this station beautiful? This station is beautiful because you can create station one using station five. You missed opportunities. You were desperate for opportunities. You cried because nothing worked for you. God took you to a season of learning. Now he wants you to create that station again. He wants you to balance your life with five and one, like a bicycle, like five and one, like the way you cannot ride the bicycle with one leg. Is you have to balance uh, five and one, 
five and one. You are balancing five and one using blessings, create opportunities, blessings, opportunities, blessings, opportunities. Like a bicycle, like a, a motorcycle. You are balancing now. You are balancing to get where you want to go. Now you need to balance. So you have to dance with five and one. Five and one. So this is a station which gives you a chance to create Station one. Let's see something. How some people in the Bible created this station. Let's see something in the book of Second Kings. Second Kings, chapter seven. We see how our friends created. There is no situation which is permanent. Are we together? There is no situation which is permanent. I want you to know. Whatsoever you are going through, whether you have money, it's not permanent. So, but you can maintain your money by creating opportunities with your money. Or you can create opportunities using your blessings. You can create opportunities using your blessings. Now, let me show you something. In 2 Kings chapter 7, verse 8 and 9, it says this. Uh, when these lepers came to the outskirts of the camp, they entered one tent and ate and drank and carried from their silver and gold and clothes and went and hid them. They retained and entered another tent and carried uh, from there also and went to hide them. These guys were poor, were beggars. They were chased out of the town because of their leprous. No one considered them. They were living. But God has have told you that there is a way God can just do things and blessings just come upon your life. The lepers from nowhere, blessings came upon their life. And I'm telling you, the one who is watching that God is about to do something just to change things, just to bring blessings upon your life. Because this is the God we save. The God who can be able to change your situation. The lepers' life changes from being beggars, from being useless, from being people who are not worthy. They have become billionaires, rich guys, healthy guys. But watch this number nine. Then they said to one another, at least they were wise. They said to one another, we are not doing right. This day is a day of good news, but we, we are keeping silent. If we wait until morning light, punishment will overtake us. Now, therefore, let us go and tell the king's household. What they are saying, God has done something good to us. Can we use what God has done to be uh, to go and create an opportunity to be accepted in the city? They are saying what we're doing is not right. So when you are blessed, you are not creating opportunities. You are not doing the right thing again. You are missing it. Are we together? If you are not using your opportunities, your blessings to create opportunity again, you are not doing the right thing. So the lepers are saying we are not doing the right thing. When you are blessed, ask God what do you want me to do. When you are a boss somewhere, ask yourself why did God give me this position? If you don't ask yourself these questions, you are missing it. Because you go to the danger now. Because the beauty is that you can create station one with station five. But the danger is what? The danger is that you can also create station three with station five. You can come straight from station five, the station of blessing. You can go and graduate straight to station number three, station frustration. Because you failed to use your blessings wisely. You will be frustrated. You go back to the season of blaming everything. Oh, I had things. People loved me when I had things. Now I don't have things. You know this way the way it is. My husband has changed. My wife has changed. Every, every, you, you go back to blaming everybody, the devil, uh, people, God, even the weather. You, you blame everything, the government. As, as though you want them to be bringing money at your doorstop. You blame everybody because you missed uh, the opportunity uh, to use your blessing to create opportunities. Let's see what, what, which guy missed uh, this opportunity. Uh, uh, we see in the book of Matthew uh, chapter uh, 18 verse 23 to 35. Matthew chapter 18 verse 23 to 35. Uh, the Bible says, verse 23 says, for this reason the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a certain king who wished to settle accounts with his slaves. And when he had begun to settle them, there was brought to him the one who owed him 10,000 talents. 
But since he did not have the, the means to repair, his Lord commanded him to be sold along with his wife and children and all that he had and, uh, uh, and the repayment will be made, even himself to be sold. Just imagine, even himself to be sold. That's when payment will be sold. So each one is sold from different places. The slave therefore falling down, prostrate, prostrated himself before him saying, have patient with me, I will repay you everything. So he says, I don't want you to cancel my debt, but just give me time. I can be able to change this thing. The master and the Lord of that servant felt compassion and he released him and forgave him the debt. He says, I'm not going to give you time. I'm going to forgive you. Which means, I've blessed you. You are free. You are no longer owing. Now you are a free man. Free. Enjoy your children. Enjoy your wife. Enjoy a good status. Because for this guy to say, give me time, I'll pay back, it means he had a chance. He had some money. He had some money, but he could not just meet the target of the boss. He was by far, but he had something. So go and enjoy what you have. Now, the Bible says, But the slave went out and found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred denarii, uh, and seized him, and began to choke him, saying, Pay back what you owe. So the fellow servant fell down, began to entreat him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay you. He was unwilling, however, but went and threw him in prison and he, until he should pay him what was owed. So when his fellow slaves saw what had happened, they were deeply grieved and came and reported to the Lord all that had happened. Then summoning him, the, master, the Lord, his Lord said to him, You wicked slave, I forgave you all that debt because you entreated me. Should, should you not also have mercy on your fellow slave even as I had mercy on you? And the Lord and his Lord moved with anger, handed him over to the torturers until he should repay all what he was on. Now he was not just what he was going to be tortured for the rest of his life in the prison. So shall my heavenly father also do to you in, if each of you do not forgive his brother from your heart. This guy is blessed. He's a rich guy. But he's just very, you know rich people also have got huge debts. This thing which I, I, I know it. I, you know, this rich guy is also a huge debt. So he failed to settle another debt, but he was forgiven, which means his, still, his status was big. But he fails to forgive a small. He fails to use station blessings to create opportunities for him. What happened? He ends up on station three, which is now worse than where he was. Because here they are saying, be tortured for the rest of your life. Why? He fails to use station five properly. Use station 5 properly because if you fail, it will take you straight to station 5 and you may miss it. So I'm saying, what will cause you to go to station 3? And gratefulness is the spirit which makes you forget why you are blessed and who blessed you. You forget, you think you are blessed because our papers are beautiful and what and what. So you forget about that. You miss it. In this station, people tend to spend more time to the blessing than the blesser. You take your time always, uh, just uh, uh, time with your blessing, your blesser. You are married now, you are giving us just stories about your husband. I can't come to church, my husband wants to find me, I'm busy at work. You give reason when you didn't have a job, you are spending all your time at church. Pastor, pray for me. You were faithful, but now things have happened. You are the most troublesome person, like Queen Esther. When God blessed her, she forgot she thought she was a queen because she was beautiful. But you have to know, for uh, the king, they used to choose a lot of beautiful people. They bring them before the king. So it was just God's blessing which caused Esther to be picked. Not that because she was the only beautiful lady there. So she forgot. Yeah, sometimes you forget because you think you are the only one who is educated. You are the only one who is called, uh, 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 maybe praise the Lord. You are the only one who, uh, who works hard. You are the only one who does things this and this. Use your blessing to create opportunity. So, Mordecai is telling Esther, create an opportunity for us to be saved. Esther is saying, no, my husband does not allow that. We have to follow the law. We have to do this. That's like many people give a lot of reasons why they can't give, why they can't come to church, why they can't be faithful. That's what Esther is doing. But I love Uncle Mordecai. He says, Esther, you are a fool. Don't think you will survive if this tsunami which is about to take you, the tsunami of Amman, when it comes, no one will survive. In fact, the other Jews God may use because God has got a way of blessing his people. 
uh, 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 he will bless uh, he will bless them in another way he will bless them in another way and you Esther you won't survive this and Esther changed she said okay I'm going to obey you she fasted and went to the king and brought a changed answer why because now the uncle showed her how to use blessings. And the uncle says, you don't know why you are in that position. So as you are watching, you don't know why you have that money. You don't know why you have that job. Maybe it's to support this ministry, HCPD, uh, online television. Maybe it's to support HCPD, online television. Maybe it's to support the ministry. Maybe the orphans. Maybe to the work of God. You don't know. Maybe to your family members blessed you. You need to know that. What lesson should we learn here? Session number five, the greatest lesson which you have to learn is to open your eyes. People, when they are blessed, they want to close their eyes on the needs of people, on the problems of people, uh, on the needs of people, the problems of people. They want to close their eyes. They don't want to know the needs of people. They don't, you know, they just think about themselves. They don't want to think about others. It's all, it's me, I, and myself. Me, I, and myself. Me, I, and myself. Me, I, and myself. My friend, learn to open your eyes. One of my favorite artists, the late Keith Green, a song, one song says, the problem is that you close your eyes and you pretend the job is done. You don't want to open your eyes to the needs of the church. You don't want to open to the, your eyes to the needs of your pastor. You don't want to open your eyes to the needs of your community. Open your eyes. Esther wanted to close the eyes, but Mordecai helped to open the eyes. Galatians chapter 6 verse 10. As we are concluding, Galatians chapter 6 verse 10. Uh, uh, let's see what is there. Uh, Galatians chapter 6 verse 10. Uh, uh, let's see what God is just uh, ministering to the church. Galatians chapter 6 verse 10. I like it. The Bible says, So then, while you... While we have opportunity, which means when you have the blessings uh, uh, to bless others, when we have opportunity, when you have a chance, when we have opportunity, let us do good to all men, especially to those who are in the household of faith. Make use of the blessings which God has given you. He's saying use, Paul is saying, see opportunities, how you can be a blessing to non-believers, and but far much more to believers how you can help your fellow believers be a blessing now as we close what thing one thing to note on this station if you don't watch cry for what can happen on this station we are saying the danger one of the things you have to watch out on this station because we're saying open up your eyes one of the dangers you have to watch on this station watch out the spirit of pride Watch out the spirit of pride. When God has blessed you, when God has lifted you, watch out the spirit of pride. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 16 to, uh, verse 16 to 18, is God is reminding the children of Israel that you shall know that I gave manna not because of your power, so that you boast. I gave it because I just love you. I just took you to station number five, station of blessings. You didn't do anything to be where you are. How many people are beautiful and not married? No, I'm married because I'm beautiful. I've seen people who look like a train, they are married, and people who look like a aeroplane, they are not married. I've seen it in my life. I've seen people who are educated, not employed. And the people who are not even whatsoever, not employed, they're the ones who are learning big contracts. My friend, it's just the season of blessings. It's just the season of blessings. And he says, you shall remember that it is the Lord your God who gives you power to make wealthy. The reason why things are working out for you is not because of yourself. It's because God has brought you to station number five so that you can create opportunities. And I want you to know that life is just about opportunities. Don't miss this chance of creating for yourself opportunities because it will never come again. Watch this season so that you can survive the station opportunity. So play with five and one. God bless you. This has been Bishop Perry Viemba from Joyful Bible Church. I've been talking about life is a journey with five stations. And I want you to invite your neighbor, your friends to watch again HCPD online television. God bless you. May you receive the blessings of God. Amen. Mpendwa mtazamaji wa HPD Online TV ni matumaini yangu kwamba umejifunza mengi na umejielewa hata na mwenyewe majira na nyakati ambayo unapitia. Kama baba mtumishi wa Mungu anatufundisha juu ya vituo 
kwamba maisha ni safari yenye vituo na kwamba kila majira kila nyakati zina muda wake na hakuna majira ambayo ni ya kudumu ni ya milele katika maisha ya mtu utakuwa katika kipindi hiki utahama utakuta kipindi hiki utahama katika majira haya utahama na fahamu kwamba Mungu ndio anetawala majira na nyakati basi tukijua kwamba kila jambo kuna majira yake na wakati wa kila kusudi chini ya mbingu endelea kuishi katika kusudi la Mungu aliyokusudia yatambua makusudi ya Mungu katika maisha yako na ukiyatambua yafanye hayo ili kwa kila kituo ambacho umefikia cha maisha yako uweze kunufaika uweze kushinda hata kama ni kituo ambacho kina changamoto sana utoke pale umefanikiwa kama washindi ambao tunawasoma katika Biblia waliofanikiwa usiwe miongoni mwa wanaoshindwa uwe miongoni mwa wanaoshinda fahamu kwamba hata haya majira unayopitia hayatatuko milele hiyo tabu unayopitia ina mwisho wake sababu kila jambo ina majira yake Mungu akubariki naitwa mchungaji na mwalimu ni mwingine mwajumba namba zangu za simu ni 0754 48 73 25 Ninakukaribisha katika ibada zetu. Tunafanya ibada katika kanisa letu la Hosana Christian Center liko Tabata, Tabata Mwananchi au Tabata Kiswahili. Ukiwa katika jiji la Dar es Salaam, Afrika Mashariki, jiji la Dar es liko Tanzania, Afrika Mashariki, tembea ile Mandera Road. Utakuta kituo cha Mwananchi. Pale pale wewe uliza boda boda yoyote au au wenye pikipiki au wenye bajaji mwambie naenda gate la Emmanuel. Kwa kwenye lango la kanisa letu tumeandika Emmanuel maana yake Mungu pamoja na sisi. Basi utakuwa umefika kwenye kanisa ambapo tunafanya ibada na na, na huduma mbalimbali. Kila Jumanne tuna darasa la kukuu ya wokovu. Pamoja na maombi na maombezi ya kufunguliwa kutoka katika mifumo mbalimbali. Yale maneno tunajifunza ndio yanakuwa msingi wetu wa kutoweka huko. Ibada za Jumanne tunaanza saa 12 na nusu jioni. Tumeka muda huo kwa ajili ya wafanyakazi na wanafunzi. 12 na nusu jioni. Jumatano tuna shule ya huduma kuanzia saa 12 na nusu jioni. Ambapo tunajifunza masomo yanayolenga kutufundisha katika huduma na neema mbalimbali ambazo Mungu ameweka katika maisha yetu tuweze kuyatumikia makusudi ya Mungu aliyoyaweka katika kizazi chetu na katika nyakati na majira aliyotupa. Ijumaa kwanza saa leo siku tunamkesha. Jumamosi kwanza saa kumi jioni hadi saa 12 tuna kanisa la watoto. Watoto wote wanakuwa ni siku yao ya kanisa. Kwa upande mmoja, upande mwingine ni idara ya vijana na wao wanakuwa na vijana vyao. Jumapili kwanza saa mbili asubuhi tuna ibada, tunaanza na maombi mpaka saa tatu. Baada ya hapo tuna darasa la wanafunzi, alafu tunaendelea na ibada mpaka mchana saa saba baada ya hapo tunapumzika saa nusu mpaka saa mbili tuna ibada kwa ajili ya ndoa na familia tunakuwa na masomo mbalimbali na maombi na maombezi kwa, kwa ajili ya ndoa na familia zetu siku ya jumanne pia siku ya jumamosi nikukaribishe kupitia redio wako redio wako ni redio ambayo ina makao yake jijini Dar es Salaam wale wote ambao wanapata mawimbi ya redio wapo ni 98.1 FM kuanzia saa 3 usiku Jumamosi saa 3 usiku tuna vipindi vyetu vinavyorushwa na redio wapo vinaitwa Hosana Christian Publishers and Distributors kila Jumamosi saa 3 karibu uwe pamoja na sisi kwa njia ya redio pia kwa hiyo nikukaribike sana huduma yetu inaitwa International Gospel Outreach ministries ndani yake kuna makanisa ya usana ndani yake kuna huduma za kuafikia vijana wanaoishi mazingira hatarishi ndani yake kuna huduma kwa ajili ya kupeleka injili kwa mataifa na kuwafanya mataifa mengine kwa wanafunzi wa Kristo ndani yake kuna huduma za kitabibu ndani yake kuna huduma nyingi ambazo Bwana amekuwa kujifanya ikiwa pamoja na kupanda makanisa ambayo tunayaita Osana Christian Centers Mungu akubariki sana endelea kuangalia vipindi mbalimbali vinavyoletwa kwako na HPD Online TV uwe na siku ya baraka amen